All right, boys and girls, welcome back to the drive through Hope everyone's having a wonderful Wednesday. As always, this drive through is brought to you by the deli. Hungry? Stop by the deli. Make yourself a salami sandwich on white um, with cheddar. Sounds disgusting. Salami and cheddar? Yeah. Swiss. Thank you. All right, so this is 10-3. Arcs in a circle, okay? You're almost certainly going to have to pause this video um, because I'm not going to, like, create a, bet, a bunch of dead air. So, just like angles, we have three different types of arcs. So, a minor arc is an arc whose measure is less than 180 degrees. Okay? A major arc is an arc whose measure is more than 180 degrees. And a semicircle is an arc on a circle whose measure is exactly 180 degrees. I'll let you copy that down. Okay, so hopefully you've paused the video and copied these notes down if you're watching online. A little riddle for you, okay? I'm thinking of two arcs. Arc 1 has a measure of 10 degrees. Arc 2 has a measure of 160 degrees. Which arc is longer? Sarah? That's right. You don't know. What if I told you that my 10 degree arc was on Earth, but my 160 degree arc was on a golf ball? The 10 degree arc would be longer, wouldn't it? Significantly longer. So that's what I'm telling you is that it's very important that you understand the difference between arc length, which would be measured in what type of units? Not whatever you'd like, but let's be more specific than that. Centimeters, miles, feet, inches, thank you. Could I measure it in farts? No, so it's not whatever I'd like, okay? It's whatever I'd like that represents a unit length or a one-dimensional length, okay? How do I measure measure? That's a weird question. With degrees. Right now, that's the only way we measure them. Is there another way to measure arcs? It's called radians, and we'll get into that at some point, okay? Got it? Got it, got it? All right, so... In order for arcs to be congruent, they don't only have to be the same measure, but they also have to be the same length, which means they've got to come from the same circle or congruent circles. Bless you. Okay? And then the rest of this uh, lesson is just six theorems, but really it's just three theorems with their converses. Okay? So here's your first one. If two central angles of a circle are congruent, then their intercepted arcs are congruent. The converse of that is also true. If two arcs of a circle are congruent, then their central angles are congruent. So in this example here, if you know that that's true, then you know that those are congruent. Does that make sense? All right, hopefully you've paused the video and copied those down. Here's your next two theorems. Again, it's just one theorem and it's converse. If two central angles are congruent, then their intercepted chords are congruent. Or, if two chords are congruent, then their intercepted arcs are congruent. So if you know that you have two chords congruent, then you also know that their central angles will be congruent. Okay? Very similar to the last one, but the last time we were talking about arcs. Okay? The last time we had arcs and angles, this time what do we have? Chords and angles. So what do you think we have left? Chords and arcs. 
That's your last set of theorems. Does that make sense? And so finally, here are your chords and arcs. If two chords of a circle are congruent, then their intercepted arcs are congruent. If two arcs of a circle are congruent, then their corresponding chords are congruent. Go ahead and pause the video because there's a boom coming. Can I get a boom? <laughs>